Hi everyone. Hi mom. Okay, uh, I wasn't going to record this, but um, it occurred to me that, you know, I do a lot of things to the front of my cover. And um, yeah, somebody's going to ask me how I did that and what did I do to get that effect. So you can see that I've uh, mod podge, well, decoupage the uh, cover. I didn't do the inside. So it's um, still bendy, which is what I wanted. And then <laughs> I was working on the pages, uh, getting them inked up, and then I, I get bored, so I get distracted. So I go that way. <laughs> um, I had this idea, I was looking at the cover, and I thought, you know, I really love what's going on with her layering and um, the different looks of texture to it. So I knew that I wasn't going to do a lot to it because I don't really want to cover up what's going on there. But I always have to add a little something because that's just me. And I'm going to just telephoto in a little bit. I did do a little bit on there. So you can see there's a little bit of um, oh, honeycomb and then some overlapped circles. And I thought I would play with some paint. Now I have these metallics. This one is uh, Deco Art. And this one is the Martha Stewart. So this one's medieval gold, I think. Yep. And this one is. Uh, what's it called? Pale Bronze. It doesn't look bronze at all to me. It looks gold, but. Okay. So this is what I used. It, it's part of a. Um, silicone mat that you get at the dollar store for putting hot pots on your counter and I just cut it into smaller sizes so I have a little bit more control if I I've got a bigger piece so I can do an entire background um, but I like the little pieces so I did only did it in two spots I did it here and here and the easiest way I find is to just you know squeeze the paint out onto your craft mat. So I took some of this and I'm wondering, I have a green as well. Uh, I think I'll stick with the gold. I don't want to add too, too many weird things going on there. So I just put a little bit on my craft mat. It's getting kind of low because I do use this. Whoop, that's too much, but oh well. And I just kind of smooth it out like so with my finger. And then just take, you can take it and if you only want a small part, you can really fold it. Or if you want a larger part, you know, you can sort of squish it down. This is why I really like this. And then you can just go ahead and roll it onto your project. It's very faint, but I quite like the light texture of it. Probably not even in camera. Hang on a second. Okay. So there's just a little bit of the color, and I think I'm going to overlap a little bit of the brown. Again, just mix it. I don't care if it mixes together, it's fine. And let's, uh, let's put some here. brown shows up a little bit more. I don't know. Is that better? There, you can see that now. Okay, so for texturing, I'm just going to wipe this up. With different shapes, you can use anything you've got handy. Um, I happen to have a pit pen, and I like the cap. <laughs> I like the circle on the cap. It's nice and big. So, I'm going to put another little 
blob there. And this one I want a little bit deeper because the cap is quite narrow. So I will just uh, keep that. So you've got some paint there and then you just sort of randomly smush it down. I don't know why it's not working on that side. I'm not on camera, sorry. Hang on. I'm trying not to get ink everywhere. And paint all over everything. Okay. The nice thing about doing things like this is it's um it's just random. You don't have to be perfect with it. Which is works really well for handling my OCD. Now, I don't want to waste that, so I just dip my finger and just kind of rub it along the edge of my book. It'll give me a little bit of shine. get this wiped up. And then I'm just going to wipe this off real quick so it doesn't dry too much on there. And then I'm going to take my heat gun and just um, dry it a little bit. Kind of like the bubbles that that left behind. Another texture. widen out a little bit now so you can see a little bit better. Not going to be 100% dry but enough that it hopefully won't smear too badly. Now I can add, you know, uh, more texture. I have a pit pen. It's a Faber-Castell. So they come in different widths. And I'm going to just kind of put a few dots along here just to bring out the flower a little bit more. I actually really enjoy doing things like this. It's um, so imperfect and it's relaxing. <laughs> I just kind of like the look of that. Okay, well you get the idea. I'm not going to finish it, but you get the idea. You want to enhance anything. You can do little white dots, little black dots. Really depends on you know your background colors. Uh, you can mix black and white. You know you can do all kinds of cool things. So anyway, that's the cover. I'll let that dry, and then I wanted to show you a couple of things that I've discovered. So 
When I buy, sorry, a little grungy. When I buy my kits, every designer lays theirs out just a little bit different. Um, this particular designer from Engrafo, I don't know her name, but um, she makes full use of her papers, which is awesome. And uh, <laughs> I discovered this one I printed from my Hewlett Packard. It is a 8600 Pro all-in-one. Prints great. Uh, but I was having issues. The, the print head, I think, is going. I, I think I killed it with <laughs> all the printing I do. Um, so I purchased a Canon PIXMA 2920 series. Uh, love the color. I wish, do I have anything that I can show you? Yes, I do. Hang on one sec. Okay, so I printed this out today. <clears throat> and the colors are beautiful. I actually really, really love the Canon's um, color. I find a, it's um, not as dark. Uh, sometimes my Hewlett Packard would go quite dark in the background, but I really love the way the Canon prints. Problem with the Canon, the, the PIXMA that I have, um, I, let me grab this here. These are all the things that I've cut up in preparation for you guys. Now let's see. Okay. Now that's done on the Hewlett Packard. One of these is up here. Okay, so this is what happened when I, I wanted to run, this is a sheet of four um, postcards, and I wanted to put it back into my printer so that I could print on the opposite side, which I do all the time, um, but with the PIXMA, it leaves that much of a border at the bottom. Very disappointing. You cannot change the margin on it. I have done tons of, I think I was on my computer searching for over an hour. Finally found something that said, yeah, it doesn't print full page. So there you go. I do love the way it prints, however, I'm not happy that it doesn't print all the way because so many of my kits that I download print end to end. And if I decide to print on the back, now I'm going to have a border. And that really bugs me. Um, I still have my old printer, so I did end up running it through. But this is what happens. This is why I know my print heads are going. Uh, that part turned out okay, but this was attached to this. This is a little pedal pocket. This was attached on the same page, so it started like that. So that's what happened. That's why I know my print heads are going. Um, I don't really care personally. It's just they're just going to be little decorations. But it did kind of bug me uh, that I couldn't print, you know, full. So after I printed two, then it started working again. So I don't know what's going on with it. It's easy enough. I can switch back and forth. I just unplug one, plug the other one in, and you know. But it's still annoying. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, Anyway, so these are the things I've done. I had to go online actually and I went to um, Nectar Creations. She has a tri-fold um, pocket, pay, uh, little pocket. Um, this is similar in that it's a tri-fold. So I thought, well, okay, how do you do it? Because I, you know, I didn't do it right the first time. Um, so I followed her tutorial. Now, uh, this is all printed like this. And it shows you exactly where to cut out. So you just cut all along there. And then on one side, you put your flaps back. Let's get this out of the way. So you, you put your flaps back on the one side. You have to cut your thumb hole out. And I used a one and a half inch punch for that. It did have the white part, so you, you can sort of follow with your punch. Um, and then what you're supposed to do is that part is supposed to be attached to your page, but it only gets attached here and here, which I thought was kind of weird because then even if you fold this over, 
And then of course this gets tucked under. So it's, you attach this part together. So you've created a, another little pocket. But even doing that, you attach that part down there. This folds over, but then this is loose. If you glue this part down, you've now made your pocket narrower. I mean, I suppose I could run just a light bead of glue along there. I'm not going to lose too much. I think personally, I would be happier with that. The other thing is, um, that's kind of a bulk, right? Yes, it will be stuck down, but it is kind of bulky. And I don't know how well that will stay closed, but we'll see. Um, so the other thing, when you print like this, you could, you know, turn your page over that this is printed on and just print a background on your whole page and then you don't have to ink this part, but I'm not wasting, you know, my printer ink and I will just uh, use my distress ink. So what I do, that is uh, start kind of down in the middle and then just brush it up till I've got enough coverage that I'm happy enough with. I know my camera's moving, sorry guys. Okay, so when you fold and you can do it either way. You can you can either stick this side down or you can stick this side down. It really depends on which way you want it to fold open. Uh, I think I decided that I was doing it this way. So now that's covered. So it does look a little bit better. I, I'll do it more, but you get the drift. And then, of course, I would ink all the way around the edges and the top you know, everywhere, all around the thumb hole. When in doubt, I ink, because <laughs> I never really know 100% um, what will show. The cool thing about the part that gets stuck down is whatever paper you're putting on, that's the pattern that will show, which will be kind of pretty. Um, so that's your tri-fold. Then there's a couple of little tags. I showed those. Now the pedal pocket, really pretty. Uh, I have several of these from um, different uh, companies. Ephemeris Vintage Garden is the first place that I got mine. And then all you do is you line up your edges here, and I just lightly score them. Just makes it a little easier to fold them. So you can leave these separate if you want and tuck them in somewhere or you can, I usually adhere them to a page. That's, I don't know, I just kind of like that look. But because the backs are completely um, finished, like it's got a pattern on here, you could leave it separate. But I print it on this side so that when it's stuck down on a page, so what you do is you fold it up. And then your last one, you fold that up and tuck it under. So you have a cute little petal pocket. So what goes in there is, let me find it in my huge mess. One of those. I can't remember. Where are you? Oh heavens, Cheryl. Got such a mess here. I think it is this one. No, that's the postcards. What did I do with it? It's not those guys. It's not these guys. I'd probably put it in a completely different spot. Oh, here it is. Here it is. So it prints out like that, fold it in half. 
you glue them together or you can do what I did. See how it printed that? Oh, that bugs me, but I'll fix it. Um, I'll probably just ink over it or something. But I'm going to leave mine as a little booklet. So you pop that open. This fits inside. And then you close it back up again. Isn't that cute? I love these. So you can leave them like this and, you know, tuck it in a little tuck spot in your book or stick it right on the page. You can, you know, put it at an angle, do whatever you want with it. Okay, then I cut out all of the tabs and for some reason, I guess, something I printed oversized, so it printed <laughs> um, the tabs in the kit oversized, which is why I said to you, wow, those are honking big. I, that was my fault. <laughs> I printed them too big, but I was able to cut two tabs out of one of the tabs, so that worked great. And I showed you how to do that. Now here's another print uh, printout, and it is another little kind of a little booklet. There's two, so you could put them together and stitch them down the middle so that you have, you know, a little booklet. You could do it like that if you wish. Um, here's another one. This one I didn't print on the other side because these ones I'm going to fold back and glue them together so that they're little journal uh, tags. Here's the pocket. I love this one. So again, you go ahead and you score it. Makes life so much easier. That's why I like this little scoreboard here because it's small and I don't have to bring out my big one. So the great thing about this kit is that she has all of the white spots for cutting out. So you, you know, there's no, you don't have to really worry if you're doing it correctly because she has it all printed properly, which is awesome. See, now a lot of them will print out this entire thing as a rectangle. And then, you know, if you're not aware to cut the corners, you're going to end up with a really bulky pocket. But she's taken it, all the guesswork away and shown you that that's exactly what you do. Okay, so that goes like that. You're going to adhere the flaps down onto your page and then this is the tag that comes with it. So you fold this one in half and glue them together. You have a really nice big journaling tag. So that's going to get, well, I didn't do that very well, but anyway, you get the drift. Wow, what did I do? <laughs> Oops, hang on a second. That's going to bug me. My OCD is kicking in, guys. Hang on. And I forgot to tell you, this actually, this paper is um, 37 pound. This was the one that I printed, this kit I printed in the 37 pound. And that's a little heavier than I like. So, gee, that's not printed properly. Hmm. That one doesn't line up properly. So I think what I'll do is I'll just trim that edge instead. I think I'll fold it over like that. Just make sure these are lined up the top. Yeah, and I'll just trim that part off. That makes more sense to me. Okay, uh, so this is the one for that. And then when I get to adding them into the pages, I will, you know, let you know the do's and don'ts of how to adhere your pockets. Is there anything else I need to show you? Uh, oh yeah, I was going to show you how to uh, cut your thumb hole out. Okay, so you can see that she's left the white here. So you turn your punch upside down, whether it's squeeze kind like I have or not, and you just gently 
squeeze it so that it's just gripping it and then check to see that you have it where you want it before you give it another punch. I'm going to move it a little because I'm super picky. Okay, and then just give it a squeeze and there you go, there's your thumb hole. You can, um, if you're using a kit or you're making your own pocket and you know it's straight across, you can use uh, an oval punch as well. That gives a nice, uh, it's not as deep but it's a little wider so I kind of like the look of that personally. Or the other thing you can do if you happen to have this punch, this is a retired Stampin' Up! punch and let me just grab some have a piece of scrap here that I've been doodling with. Okay, so you can also use your tap punch. Just make sure you don't punch it. You see where the little points are? So you want to go underneath that and then that kind of gives you a nice thumb hole. Or you can go even higher just to you see where the curve is right up here. Uh, you can go that far, which is what I do, kind of like that. And it gives you a nice thumb hole with a little bit of a squared off edge. So you can use all kinds of things to create thumb holes. You don't have to buy a thumb hole punch. I saw that online and thought, wow, really? Because <laughs> pretty much everybody has a circle punch. And yeah, you don't need a thumb hole punch waste of money. Okay, I think that's it for now. Um, and Okay, so what time am I at? 26 minutes. Yeah, um, I'll just quickly show you. This is what I did for the inking. Okay, so in order to get that look, I won't do the full page, but I'll show you. It all depends on the angle that you hold, you know, it at. So, if you've got it at a nice steep angle, you're going to get more coverage. And then if you tip it more, you're going to get it really dark along the outside edge. So you can start at a lower angle and then really tip it to get dark. And that's how I ink. Okay? Alright, so that's episode three. I'm going to get all the pages inked up and then we'll start laying them together and figuring out what we're going to do. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.